Hey there everybody, Joe here. Thanks for tuning in. So on the last video, I put the basic layout of my water in the landscape, which has the gradient of the sky reflection on the water turning into the underwater colors as it comes closer to where my feet would be. So I said that I wanted to do like a white sand look on this in that video and, and I added too much of the red and yellow. So you can see how easy it is. It tricks me all the time still, you know, I, I end up putting too much in the white. I overdid that intending to do something more white and got a very orange colored uh, earth color, but I'm just going to go with it and let it be. Uh, the next step is going to be putting the reflection of these distant hills on the water. So what makes water look glossy and, and well, any surface to look real glossy and reflective is those clean, hard edges that define objects that are reflecting. So without any edges, it's hard to tell if a surface is glossy or not, whether it's the little white dot that you put on an eyeball when you're painting a picture of that or or if it's just the hard line of separation that you always see when people are doing chrome like you know you do the dark on the bottom and the blue gray on the top and you have clean sharp lines that makes things look glossy so as I add these reflections this water is going to start to look much more realistic and glossy and so the way I'm going to do that is First, I'm going to just logically decide what the color would be if this hill is reflecting on this water. So this is my sky color. So if I'm going to put the reflection of this over the top of that, that means that the sky reflection is no longer part of my mix. This, this right here, I mean, just imagine a mirror image. It's turning this upside down, except that it's distorting it. So it's not going to reflect the sky color right there, it's reflecting the hill colors and everything that you see is the sum of the light that is coming from that direction. So it's the light that's bouncing off of the water from this hill and it's the light that's coming from the water from underneath and we decided the underwater color is this dark color that I made just different than the hill. So what I'm going to do then is just start with the straight mix of the underwater color and just put that on this background to be the reflection of this hill because this is a dark object and so this is going to be an even darker reflection because what's under this water is darker than this hill and this hill is not that bright so this is going to be a dark reflection reflections on deep water tend to be darker than the object, their reflection, they're, they're reflecting. But reflections on shallow water like this here, where the sun is lighting up uh, what's under the water, those tend to be lighter than the source that it's reflecting. So I'm going to use my same horizontal strokes and start putting this color in here. And the truth is this could be, you know, um, probably a lot of different shades of a dark greenish color maybe just gray. I, it, it's so dependent on what's under that water. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that it's worth splitting hairs over, but but it can be uh, it, it can be pretty accurately calculated if you want to go to that length. So I'm just using the, the exact same color I use in here, but this one is not getting mixed with the blue. So let me refresh your memory on this the faces of these waves are these light areas and so every time the water turns back away from my eye it catches more reflection because of the changing angle so when water is more like this as I've said many times before you see the reflection bouncing off like a skipping rock when it faces toward you you see right through it but there's still a little bit of reflection but the faces of these waves as they get further away are becoming an angle that is that is not as uh, directly at 90 degrees to your eye. Man, that was hard for me to get that out. <laughs> I had to think hard about that sentence. So 
as they get further away, even the faces of the waves are, are at an angle that the light is going to bounce off the surface. So you start to lose the underwater color the further you get. That's why all of this is blue up in here. So there's a lot of wave faces still. You know, this water has all kinds of waves all across. But the faces of the waves back here are too far to, to tilt up at such an angle that you can see into them. All right, so I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to come back and put little horizontal strokes of the faces of those waves after I put this dark color in there. All right, so I'm going to try to follow the shape that I already have, and I'll just, I'll just put these little strips coming out on the edge like this so that it looks like the ripples of the water distorting the edge of this hill right here. Now, I, I shouldn't have... That was kind of dumb that I just did that when I still have to put the background color in there. I'm just going to end up redoing it. But anyway, you see the effect that it has. Let's just try this. We'll try this light underwater color, see what happens. Yeah, that's going to be too bright. Let me get some white. So I'm just going to mix this white. Since I don't have anything painted here, let's just put white on there and then my... I'm going to put a lid on this one so it doesn't dry. Right there. So I'm adding white to it, but I still want it to be darker because, you know, if this is deep, deeper water in this distance, which I want it to look like that, then the combination of the dark, the, uh, the darkness of that deep water with only some of this light bouncing off is going to be a darker result than that. The result is always, you know, somewhat of an average between the two colors. There we go. That looks like it'll dry to a little bit darker to a comparison. That's pretty darn close. Here, let's make it a little bit darker. Here, and I'll just dip my brush in the water there, make this, make this flow quickly. Okay, and then I'll grab this color. Full concentration now, coming back to this hill, and I'm going to start building my reflection. So here's something, here's, here's a, a little bit of an oversight I see in a lot of paintings. When you're making this upside down mirror reflection of these objects, you want to make the center line that it's reflecting from the horizon, not the end of the water. So I'm not going to put a mirror reflection starting from this line here. I'm going to start from this imaginary line that would be my horizon. Okay, so I'm just making these little brush strokes shooting out here. And right now you can't see the difference very well, so I'm hoping that when this dries, it'll be just dark enough to see that. So here's what happens with reflections is that when the water is going like this, it'll turn and stop reflecting this because it turns away from it then the wave goes this way, then it's reflecting it again. So you get, you get the stop, start, stop, start. You get, you get these uh, reflections of sky in between the reflections of the water. So I can make that pattern by following the blue that's already on there. So I don't want to confuse this color that's my underwater color with what I'm, this darker version of the color that I'm using for the reflection. So if I can, you know, pull out a detail brush. This doesn't have to be done. You can just mix colors and it'll still look good. But, but if you really want to understand the way the reflection works, this is, how, this is how it happens every time. You'll have the object that's in that background, you know, near the horizon, happening right in the middle of all of the areas that are blue, all of this blue space. I'll come in here and put little lines 
And because they're tilting past level, they're tilting this way, well, waves that are all the way down here might grab this reflection because they're tilting toward it. So I might put a few little dark chops right, right in here. But I'm putting them on the areas that I already established as my reflection by painting it with that blue. So this is where it's really handy to have a brush that has that nice, nice sharp shape to it. This brush is already starting to lose that shape too. I can feel it getting kind of when I worked on a paint crew, we call it fish, fish mouthed. You know, that's how paint crews are. You go from place to place, they have different terms for those funny little things that happen on the day to day job. The brush is fish mouthed. It's time for a new one. That's when it splits apart and you don't get the, that clean edge anymore. So I don't want to kill myself trying to get this right in between those because I can just come back and paint little blue areas in there. Let's put this dark. So I want to take that dark color all the way up to the shoreline. So even though this might be shallow water coming up to the shoreline and lightening that reflection, I mean, I'm going to get away with not not doing that and just leaving it dark. It's, it's not gonna be a big deal. But I kinda have to just do it now that, now that I mentioned it. You know, it's called putting your money where your mouth is. When you say something's true, you gotta prove it, you know? So I'm lightening the color with this color, that's the shore because the water's getting shallower up in here, but I'm only doing a tiny bit because this is a real sharp angle. It's not gonna let much of that color through. You know, just lighten it a little bit because mixing paint, two paint colors that are very different does not produce the same result as mixing light. So if I mixed this, this light color here, with this, then I would get a very, very gray result. And it's coming out kind of greenish, brownish when I mix that, this gold color. So I'm just using white to lighten it right here so that it looks like shallower water. I used white in addition to some of that, some of that dirt color that I made. There, that's good. You know, it's, it's very distant, so so it would just be a thin little strip. Then I'll just use the, the dark color for anything, anything down below that. Okay, so now I'm putting little notches in here. See, this is the part of the painting where I think, uh-oh, I'm going to start boring people. I got to hit the fast forward. <laughs> but that, that caused some frustration last time. And I get it. I understand it. So you just, you know, just tell me. Just tell me if it's, if it's getting boring. You got to let me know. So this is a pretty tall peak right here. And so I've got some blue that I can put that reflection in there. I'm just using the top of this paint can to, you know, when I do this on the paint can, I'm just sharpening that brush is what I'm doing, keeping the, keeping it like a knife so that when I go sideways, I get that nice, nice clean line. And I'm resting my hand on the canvas now. 
my hands aren't steady enough to do this without the without that rest. Maybe on a good day they are. You know, since that's got so much, I think I'm just gonna, I made the point with that light blue, but here I, I think I wanna see more reflection coming in here. And then I'll just come back and put little, little strokes of the, the light blue back in. I wanna see a little bit more solid reflection in here. Okay, so the next would be these colors. I would add these. And so I'll, I'll put maybe a little bit in there. I don't feel like it's real important for capturing the effect of, of this reflection on the water. It's just more of a, more of a, you know, perfectionist thing. I just feel like I got to have it in there because it would be there. So I'm going to take this, this uh, re color I used to do the reflection of the sky and I'll add a little bit of red to it. Red? Maybe I'll add maybe I'll add some magenta. Just go a little bit more violet. So the, the red can make it kind of green. I think it'll look good if I go a little bit more violet. Here, because I have some kind of violet tones in there. And so then that mixing with any orange tones from under here is going to produce a violet. Because remember, blue and orange make a violet when you mix them. You know, you can see that with that light triangle. Blue and orange don't make gray or, or a dirty greenish gray like they do with paint. With light, it makes a pale kind of violet. All right, this might be a good color here. Let's add a tiny bit of green too. See what that looks like. Yeah, so here's my my background color. So again, I'm putting this where I've already established that there's reflection. So this is definitely something that can be easier with oil paint when you can keep mixing things together. If you want it to be real nice and smooth, you know, if you're okay with it being separated on it, I guess it doesn't matter. Put some of that color here, here. So each layer of color as I go up, like this, you know, I have this color, then this color, then this color. On the water, if it has these waves, they're gonna bleed into each other like this, with this choppy pattern. This green is gonna bleed into this gray-violet with, with this choppy horizontal pattern, and this gray is gonna bleed up into that one. And, uh, you know, it's as many colors as you have. If there's those ripples on the water, they're gonna do that. All right, so this is starting to get a little more dry, so I can come up in here and try to put some. See, I turned my brush over because it's a little bit bent this way. So I like that slight smile shape better than if it's turned this way. You know? So I'm putting tiny little chops. I don't know why I call them chops. You know, I, I guess I just think I just think of them as just. I don't know why I started calling them that. Because I feel like I'm kind of chopping it with a chisel to make those marks, maybe. So really, way up in here, I wouldn't even see that sky reflecting because it's getting blocked by the view of this mountain. So that would be this color. And Mix 
mix in a little more. I might have it a little bit too violet, which really isn't going to matter a lot, but you know, sometimes very, very small differences in the hue of a color can make big differences in your interpretation of what it is, the way it looks. Oh, now I'm, see, now I, I messed up again because I didn't, <laughs> didn't put that light color down. Now I gotta bring that one in. I guess it's not really messing up, it's just, just a little bit of an oversight there. Okay, so we'll put this one in. And then I'll go back to my lighter green and, and fill out this hill right here. And I'm really starting to like the way that reflection's looking now. It's starting to come together. Let me, uh, let me go a little bit grayer on that. So when I have violet, that's kind of a violet. To go grayer, I just add a little bit of green. That's all I really have to do. some white to lighten it okay there we go just not quite so purple so now I'm just going over these blue areas and replacing them with this color that they would actually be reflecting so the blue was a representation of where the reflection is on the water and just a shortcut to quickly showing what makes water look like that surface but now I'm trying to be accurate with what it's reflecting where. Just going over the blue. So of course, you know, I could have started right out with this color instead of the blue. Definitely could have done that. Just kind of fun to show how the system works you know and then use it to map out the rest of the picture all right let's not sweat this too much not too much maybe just a little bit more <laughs> See, I know I can just come and redo those, those green reflections. So sometimes to get the blue, it's easier just to go over. It's such a tiny difference. You know what I'm doing right now, you can hardly even see the difference between the colors. But knowing that those colors should be there and putting them there, even though the differences are small, can really make a picture interesting very realistic details when you're dealing with tiny differences between shades of grayish colors. You know, it's, it can be really defeating when you're trying to guess those things. You're trying to guess and the difference is tiny. You're like, what am I doing? And you don't feel like you're getting anywhere, but but if you have confidence, no, this is how it works. This is the system, and I know that this should be this slightly different shade of gray right here because it's got this reflection of those hills. 
you know you know that that confidence it, it really really transforms the way you work all right so I feel like I got most of the blue out of there replaced it with that mountain color in the background so now I'll come back to that lighter green um, right there where I'm just taking this and I'll just do it on the canvas down here where I have room add a little bit of white and maybe a tiny bit of this tiny bit of that color I don't know if that even made a difference All right, let's see what we got here. This one might be like here, maybe here, here. Not too much in there. That one's going to be mostly that, that dark color. Let's go over here. Get some water, make this paint flow out a little easier. Then I'll come back and start doing that. Oh, I need a little more. Need a little darker than that. Definitely can be a challenge working with colors that look so close to each other. Okay, so that comes up in here. Where did I put that color? Right here. <laughs> I do that all the time. I forget where I'm dipping. I go to dip. No, right here. No, here. <laughs> water. I'll just mix the paint right there. Tiny bit of that white. See a trick I use sometimes if I want contrast by an edge I'll lighten the color there then I'll just make it a tiny bit darker. See I need contrast. I need it to be the darker color here but I need it to be the lighter color here. Well nobody's going to really notice a slight gradient if I make it go from the lighter to the darker right here. So in order to enhance my picture, you know, in photographs, sometimes objects bleed together and the photograph isn't very interesting. But with painting, you know, you can grab the darker color and you can enhance this edge by making it darker while you just leave this part the lighter. Now I'm going to put an object right there in front of that, so I won't worry. And I'll just put a few little bits of this reflection coming down in here on the back sides of those waves. If this was a real smooth lake, I wouldn't be doing any of this. I'd just paint the image right upside down. Just paint it right on there. Now you can see that effect with this of the paint going on lighter 
than when it dries. You know, one thing I also want, want to remind you of is that I'm being really conscious of the direction of my brush strokes. When it gets up here, I'm going real horizontal. and it gets down here, I'm starting to bend them a little bit more down. I want a very consistent transition from these angled strokes to the level strokes up here. Perspective is like, you know, steering on a car at high speed. It's just highly sensitive to, to tiny changes. And so you'll have a dramatic effect on perspective by tilting your lines a little bit. When this dries, it's going to show. Right now, you don't really see it because it's wet. But all I'm doing is just bringing that reflection of this dark hill down a little further, down a little further so that it looks like the water's kind of pulling the image downward, distorting it a little bit. Totally not necessary to get get this perfect, but I guess I just do it for sport. You know, really get into where things would be and really think it out. But that doesn't mean it's so important. It does make a difference though. This one in. Okay, I'm going to hold off on doing any further reflection until I get more of the foreground in my picture. Then I'll decide if I want to do more or less of all this background water. So you can see now that I have this this edge showing. Now it's it's telling the viewer, yeah, there's this there's this sharp edge of an object reflecting. That's a that's a very glossy wet surface. It starts to look more like natural water. Just because I want this effect to be better, I'm, I'm seeing that it just doesn't look that great. And so this is this is a good troubleshooting uh, opportunity. And so what I'm going to do is darken this. I want higher contrast on this reflection. Uh, I know that I know that my method is a good method that works but it's not producing the vivid result I want it to, so I'm just going to make it more extreme. So this one, I'm not going to lighten as much. I'm going to make these reflections darker than what I made them. So I'll make this one darker. Now that is darker, even though it looks, looks very close. This color, I'm just going to add some black to it. So here's my black paint. Now I might want to use some blue in there because that really has kind of a brownish, grayish color that I don't want in the water out there. So I might want to add some. If anything looks too brown, just add, add a little blue. So then we'll be back to our real dark greenish blue. Okay, so deep water can have real dark reflection if it's If it's far away like this, you know. Okay. All right now, I'm going to make little, just like I did before. I'm just going to take this reflection and make it turn into just tiny little horizontal lines as it comes down here.
And you know, I'll just leave this part lighter because that's not as much of a problem area. We'll just say this is deep water, deeper water up in here. A little bit of water on my brush. See, every few strokes I do this because it sharpens my brush. I'm not necessarily getting doing it to get more paint on my brush, but to keep that brush nice and sharp. There, I think this is going to look better when it dries because of that higher contrast. I'll even darken this one a little bit. Do the same thing I did before. You know, this happens to me on just about every picture. Is uh, you know, I don't I don't nail it the first time. It's it's knowing the way to get there to the result I'm after, and then kind of turning the dials a little bit as I progress. up with paint. I'm just looking for uh, messy little edges and cleaning them up. Okay, now I'm gonna come down in here and I don't feel like I put enough reflection coming down on this one either. So I'll just bring that down further. So same thing, I just added some blue and black to it and I'm ju just gonna bring the reflection down further than it was. that rag. You can use this to get excess paint out of your brush. Just keep a rag handy. Put this in here and go black and blue. Now this is this got real heavy, so I want to let you know that that's still wet and it's drying down. So this will be interesting to see, you know, the difference between what it looks like now and then when it dries. It'll darken down to a color that I think will will look better for the reflection there. Let's get that booger off my canvas. There we go. And you know, now I think I'm gonna do a little bit more of that light reflection on there. Let's see if I can get a color like that again. I just added black to my sky blue. I could have done that all along. That worked pretty good. It's 
pretty much the color I need right there. Still slightly violet, but only slightly. See when I do this, I'm just getting the paint out of my brush because it picks, it's picking up some of that dark green. I just use my canvas as a, as a trash can <laughs> for my loose paint in my brush. color down here. Add some a little more of white and sky blue in there. Gotta lighten up that color down here. this is shallower uh, shallower water with that lighter that lighter sand color coming up through it you know let's just put that on there let's do an experiment let's put that color right there and this color is the reflection of this mountain right here it's supposed to be so I added a little bit of black to it. Then I'll take just a little bit of my mix of my, my dirt color, that's this bright color down here, and the deep water color, and make the faces of some waves in there. shallow spots where the light's coming up from the bottom. Yeah, I should probably probably call it a day. And this definitely spent longer than I had hoped to on this water. But you know that's it's definitely the way it goes with the real project, and you don't uh, edit out the the boring stuff. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> see how this goes over with everyone. a little bit more of my dark color here. See, I just revolved back and forth. You know, I did this color, now I'm doing this color within those brush strokes that I made. And they don't match. <laughs> I didn't do so great on the match there. Let's see if I can get it a little better. Yeah, that matches a little bit better.
All right, now you can see it's, it's starting to dry, so this color is getting, getting darker to where I want it to be. But now I have a problem with it suddenly going from these dark colors to these really light colors, and I, I'm not liking that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make a more gradual fade here by going back to my, my process from the last time and making more of a gradual change. But this time I'm going to do it with, with these colors going up into that rather than with that, with that bluer color. So the way I did that color was by adding a little bit of the flag to my sky color. That sky color right there, I can take a tiny bit of black, put it on there. It's really interesting, you know, looking at your picture real small, one of the valuable things about about doing video of my work, uh, I'm gonna, this is white right here, I'm gonna add white uh, where it's getting into the shallower water because I wanna lighten up my reflection colors as that bright color is coming out from under it, so. Put this here. Oh, I got off, uh, got off track there. One of the valuable things, you know, that you get out of, of doing video of yourself is you see the picture real small as you're working, as you're progressing. So when it's real small, it shows you things that you, it tightens up all the details and shows you things you wouldn't have seen looking at the big picture as much. You know, I'm all right up on this looking at one stroke at a time. You zoom out and see the whole picture. And, you know, you can quickly see if you're accomplishing the look that you're trying to get. So it's valuable, you know, to keep that, keep that camera rolling. All right, now I'm grabbing the, that lighter tan color. And I'm just doing, you know, those same wave faces I did before, trying to make a, a very gradual change out a little bit. That's my black and sky blue mix right there. Tiny bit more black. I'll put some water so I can spread it out. Then I'll put some white because as that bright, bright uh, floor comes comes up out of there, the light lightens this reflection color as they're mixing. Isn't that funny that I did all of that blue reflection just to completely replace it with this more grayish violet? Thinking ahead is not always my gift. <laughs> There's a nice technique right there. You know, when the paint's just tacky, you know, you can just run that brush quickly across and it will blend it together. I guess I'll do the same thing in here. Same kind of deal. I'll see if I can do a smoother blend.
Here's my sky color. Adding a little bit of black so that it looks like the reflection of these hills. The black just happens to make it a little bit more violent. Black is never really a true black, you know, colorless. So this black, you know, if it happens to make it look like a slightly violet gray, then I'll just use that to my advantage. Okay, then I'll grab this color while it's still wet, and I'll just try to do a more, more gradual transition than what I had on there. Just That was kind of a very sudden change. Do some blending here. <laughs> Look at that big goober I got on. You know that more violet hue is probably more accurate for the sky as well. You know when I mix the black because like I said when the blue mixed with an orange you get, get a more violet color. Oh whoa see the angle? See my angle change? I went this way and all of a sudden that spot looks very different than the rest. It's a good example of the difference it makes. Let's just go over it a few times. Diagonal. I want this to look a little bit more like a large body of water and a little bit less like a river. And so this slight angle on this, on this piece of the water right here is causing it to look like it's coming toward me because it's just a slight angle but it's so close to the horizon that that's a slight angle is far off from a, 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 what a straight level line would be giving the effect of. So, when you're up close to the horizon, little differences uh, make a big difference in the look. So I'm going to take this, this dark color, and I just added a little bit of black, and I know I, I added some blue to that before too, so maybe I'll do that. Also try to make that same color again. And I'm just going to take this line up a little bit higher. Make it a little more level. At this distance, you know, that tiny strip of light, light beach right there might represent 50 yards of, of uh, distance beneath those trees. You know, so I want to be mindful of that, of, of the large distance that tiny, tiny things represent when I'm way up by the horizon here. So see, I'm raising this up and I'm going to make it altogether more level. Here. See, so when I get up in here, maybe I'll make another little area of shore shooting out. See, I can do change over vertical space, uh, but it's going to look better as long as I, if I don't make a straight line. You know, if I make a straight line coming down, then that's that's going to look funny because you you just don't see such a perfectly straight span of shore just going I mean it, it definitely happens but I just know that's gonna look strange in my picture so I want to really zigzag that line 
then I'll come down here and and maybe I'll even maybe I'll even raise this one up too. I want this to look like a little bit larger body of water and I lightened I lightened it right here. I remember because I wanted it to look like shallower water. So I'll stick with that and just raise up this line as well. And you see it was just a tiny bit that I raised it up. While I'm in this light color, this one was lighter too, so I'll just come over here and raise that one up as well. and some of the white. There we go. Yeah, I mean, who knows, maybe that's shallower water up in there, making the reflection a little lighter. I just wanna keep that contrast between these edges. There, so you know, I, I brought my horizon, or my, not my horizon, I brought the edge, I brought the shoreline up a little bit. I'm just gonna blend this. And it was a tiny bit, but I also, more than just bringing it up, I leveled it out so that it, it's gonna appear to be um, more of a shoreline that's, that's further on the horizon because of how level it is. So that's just an example of how sensitive to to the direction of your lines, the perspective is. I'm just trying to soften my, my blend there. All right, cool, so now I think I'm gonna start bringing in this, this shoreline that's right here at what would be my feet because I wanna, I wanna start visualizing this picture and that's kind of a, a funny color without any context. So typically, you know, when, when something's underwater, it's a little bit darker. So I'll just make the, the ground that is not underwater pretty much that same color, which I ran out of, so now I have to remix it. Uh, only lighter. So I'll get my red and yellow. And this time I'm just not going to add as much because I, I already felt like I added too much the first time. I didn't want it to look so orange, but hey, I guess we're doing some, some red dirt in this picture. Some red. I'm just barely dipping the corner of the brush. Just a tiny little corner of the brush in there. And we'll use lots of white. You can see a little bit of blue was in my bucket there. A little more red. All right, let's see what that looks like when I just bring it right up to the shoreline. Here, and I'll just cut some of it off, kind of zigzag the line a little bit. Now the truth is, you know, you don't have such a such a sharp edge transitioning transitioning <laughs> from what's out of the water to what's under the water. Usually, they, you know, the, the water is soaking the ground, so it's a little bit more of a blended line. So I'm going to see if I can achieve that by first of all darkening the shore, adding a little more of that red and yellow here where it's close to the water, and I'll just grab a tiny bit of black because I remember using some black in that mix to make it a little bit more of a natural looking tone. Just got a little bit more of that black. So now this color is real close to a match. 
and when it dries, it'll be even a little darker. Let's get a little more black. Like that, and I'll just make it get lighter as it gets further away from that. Let's go a little more on that red, yellow, black. Here, I'll, I'll put my excess red up there. It's hard to get just the, the right tiny amount of this red and yellow, so I'll just put them on my canvas and then get them as I need them. Grab some of that black. There we go. I'm liking the way that looks. Then I'll just let it blend into this more white color as it gets further and further from the water. Because that drier ground is, you know, darker. When you soak dirt with water, it gets a darker color to it. There's that blue again. Man, I must have really clobbered my gallon with some blue. a little more of this color in here. See, so I have a ton of white here. The same way black can look kind of brownish, uh, white also can. When you surround white with shades of blue, it, it, can, it can look like it has a color too. All right, so, I think I would like it if that shoreline was a little bit more gradual. So I'm thinking that maybe I can, there's my, my rag is here under the camera. I'm thinking while this is still a little bit wet, I can just kind of, kind of obscure this edge a little bit. And it's probably gonna look a little more natural. Just a little bit. Yeah, I like that better. There, now I have a little more context to what kind of ground this water, this ground going down into that deeper water. And we'll just say this is a drop off here because it suddenly shifts to those, those other colors. I wanted that to be more gradual, but I'm not gonna sweat it right now. So I think it'd be cool to put, I had said when I first mapped this out, I was gonna put a big rock coming out. So that'll be cool, I'll put a rock that I can later put my my greens and my foreground foliage on. So this will be fun to paint a rock. You know, when I do rocks, I use a ton of black and white. So I'll start with, with black. And then just as if my brush is a chisel, I just use it to put the highlights on like I'm cutting off sections of the rock. I'll show you what I mean. Put a dark rock just shooting right up out of the dirt here. And then it's jutting out into this water. Now this is where being real careful can get you into trouble because you know when you're building a shape like this you want to keep enough paint on the canvas to give you some time to work with it. You don't want it drying lightning fast. So when you see me doing this, I'm spreading it out, but I'm, I'm trying not, I'm not spreading it out really thin. I'm just trying to make it an even layer so that, so that I don't have problems with uh, drips and, and texture. But I am trying to keep the paint loaded on, on that canvas. There's quite a bit on there. Same thing right here. So we're turning this into some rocky terrain, some big boulders. 
I just love rocks, you know. I, I like putting them in paintings because just they add big geometric shapes to a, a picture. Hard edges, sudden color changes. They're just they're just cool, you know. Interesting to look at in a picture. All right, so now I'm going to start just taking some some pure white. And I'll just put the extra white somewhere on my canvas up there. And uh, I want to just start making some highlights on top of this. And I'm going to leave some negative space in between, like ridges, on the rock. So, you know, if this has some flat areas, those are going to be the white, the white spots. Now, the back side of this rock, turning down away from me, is is going out of view, so I'm just going to make a, only a, a tiny area on on this top side that doesn't have the highlight, and then I'll kind of backlight it with another color when I get out of the white here. to look like you could walk out on top of that rock. So you see, and, and then I'll use the direction of my brush strokes to make this look like an edge that's tilting down onto the, onto that, that maybe if it's sand. And I just put a ton of white on there. And this edge that I want to look like it's going downward, you know, the more directly an edge faces a light source, the, the more of that light it's, it's going to have. So if this edge is tilted like this and this one's flat facing straight up at the sky, this one's going to have, have the more light from that overhead sky. So I'll make this one, these level lines, more white than, than these lines that are going down like that. Make a rock there. Now come over here. Do the same kind of thing here. I feel like that could be a, a little ledge shooting out. So I kind of keep my brush strokes in the direction of, of the, the surfaces that I'm trying to paint with it, as if it's a chisel and I'm actually carving the shape. I kind of think of it that way. We'll make some more roundish rocks, maybe shooting up from here. Put a little bit of highlight in here. You know, rocks, it's an interesting thing to try to, I uh, always have a little bit of a hard time explaining just how to do rocks. But I have noticed that it's, it's usually a combination of more organic curves with sudden sharp edges. When you combine those two things, uh, it, it can look more natural. And I think the reason for that is because rocks are, are very typically things that have been both rounded over time and busted apart to make the sharp edge. So you have a combination of old edges with new edges that are freshly broken off. It just seems like a common pattern that you see if you want to make natural looking rocks. I always thought it was a cool trade, the, the people who make the artificial rocks for exhibits. And if I bring this light color all the way down by this, by this dirt, then that can be a nice, a smoother, more natural looking transition here. So that it doesn't look like just a hard cut off into there, into that dirt. So yeah, I like the way that looks. So now I'll get the littler brush out. And once again, I'm gonna make somewhat of, of a little bit 
of a violet color because I want this rock to look like it's three-dimensional. So on, on this edge that's wrapping around toward all this water, I want to bring these colors onto the edge of this rock like it's reflecting it a little bit. So to represent all of this picture, I'm just going to use kind of a, a um, slightly violet shade of blue. I ran out of my sky color, so I have to remix it. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna grab this little lid, and we might be able to get that color just by using the magenta and black. I'm not sure. Let's see what happens. I, I think I'll have to still add some blue to it. Here's the magenta and white. Let me get a little more of that. Magenta, get some black. Yeah, and I think that's gonna be just, just too purple for this rock. I mean, basically, I'm thinking uh, pretty much just gray, gray um, rock mixed with a slightly blue light from, you know, exterior light is, is real bluish. So when you take uh, blue and, and start mixing it with something gray, usually the reflection of that blue is a little more on the violet side. Let's go a little bit more blue. All right, let's see what my color looks like. Yeah, I like that. That's good. So I'm going to take this and just put it along the edge of this rock. And the purpose of this is to make my rock look three-dimensional, like it has a rounded edge. Right here, I'll even go across my bright white. And I like that this color is, is just dark enough to still make a dark edge, because I do want that contrast. Right here. And see, I left little bits of negative space in here. You know, maybe that's a downward facing facing edge that doesn't have much light on it. And I can just come in and do do little bits of, uh, you know, maybe there's a, a little edge in here somewhere that's that's turning toward toward that background and catching some some more bluish reflection. Maybe I'll take this dark spot here and make that a little more blue. I like the way that looks. Um, you know what I'm going to try is putting a little bit of that. If this is a real wet edge on this rock, going down into the water here, I'll go ahead and put put blue there too, because maybe it's just slightly reflecting the sky. All right, using that exact same color, I'm just going to go over all of these dark gray areas that are on that edge so that it looks like that's more of a edge that's turning away from my eye. Now I have a lot of room to get lighter here so I'm going to. I'm going to add white just because I can and, and make that look like a more reflective edge wrapping, wrapping around just like I do with my waves. Uh, since this is such a light color behind it, I'll still have my contrast to define the shape so I'll strategically lighten this reflection color just to make it look a little bit more reflective. Oops. I don't know where else to put that color. Maybe put some right there. Right. 
Now I'm going to put a little bit of this rock under the water. So to do that, I think what I'll do is just make it slightly darker. So now I'm adding black to my mix. Now I know that this paint's still wet, so the colors aren't going to trick me too much. So when something's underwater, it, it scrunches the image like this. So what I'm going to do is suddenly make the angle change on this rock and go zoop out like that. And then make it taper, shallower and shallower as it comes toward this, this shoreline right here. That's really getting down to the nitty gritty. I should get some of my light tan and fade that out. I don't like that super hard edge right there. You know, it's just such a slight effect. Okay, so then here, you know, uh, maybe I'll have this. barely showing. This is just a little edge that's under the water. I don't know if I'm actually going to achieve my effect I'm going for on that. We'll have to see. That might be another troubleshooter for later. But what I am going to do is is mix up some of that tan real quick and, and blend those edges. Get a new surface here, get some red, yellow, and white. Just softening this edge, you know. I thought it looked a little bit too artificial. Same thing here. Make some more of my color, add the black to it. I'm trying to just match my the color of this dirt right here. Oh, I went too far. out of places to get rid of paint. There's a bag. Actually, I can just go right on my table. That's what this thing's for. And I'll go back to that dark color I did that edge with. You know, instead of going, I'm curious about this, instead of going a little darker than the rock, I'm going to try going a little lighter. See if that gets the effect I'm looking for. I bet it will. You can go either way with things that are underwater. That edge that goes under the water might be a little bit lighter than the rest or a little darker, depending on how much light is bouncing from where. Let's just try it. Let's 
Try the same thing here. Let's go a little bit lighter instead of darker. I don't like how much contrast is on that edge right there, so I'm just going to lighten it. Yeah, darker is definitely better. You know, let's really make this go, go out. See, there's a sudden change here. This is not, if it's under the water, it's not reflecting like this edge that's above the water. And then notice that I made the angles shift up more horizontal like because, because, um, because the water scrunches that image, squishes it, vertically squishes it. That's cool. So maybe I'll maybe I'll lighten that one up a tiny bit too, but being careful being careful to keep my edge so that it still looks like an edge maybe going down under the water. Then if I want to, you know, I bet I can enhance that effect by just making that reflective edge more of that blue. So they look really different, you know. You want those, you want those separations to be there. So we'll go blue, magenta, and get some white. I already had my gray in there, so now I'm just mixing a purple. A blue violet with that gray. You know, add some white. Just putting more color on it. So this is kind of a cheater way. This you wouldn't you probably wouldn't have such a such a blue violet color reflecting off of this rock in reality, but I'll use it just to set it apart on that edge so that it looks like there's a piece going under the water there. Same thing with this one. All right, I like that. So I want to make a reflection of this rock on this shallow, bright water. So again, it's just the sum of the lights coming from that direction. So this is kind of green, so I'm going to add some red to it. And I want something that's in between. What's going to happen if you mix a gray with an orange light? Then you're going to have, uh, you know, probably a slightly violet, slightly reddish shade of orange. Uh, gray with an orange. You know, it needs to be grayer than that. Or you're just going to have a grayish orange. I guess, you know doesn't always have to be so complicated. Let's do this. I added black and white to that mix. There was too much red in there. Now I'll add white because it's very dark for a shallow water reflection on that bright, bright surface. So I don't want to confuse the reflection with the rock that's under the water. 
So this might be a little bit tricky. Let's, let's lighten this little edge of the rock. Right there. That lightened it a little bit more than I wanted to. Let's add a little bit of black. Right there, and now we're making the reflection right along that line coming down here. See, just, just slightly different. All right, then this one wouldn't really have one because if this had a reflection, remember it would be the upside down image on the, on the underside of that surface. So this would be blocking its own reflection. So I don't need to make a reflection over here on this rock. This is the only one. So I might want to make this a softer edge so that it doesn't, uh, so it looks like that water is gradually, gradually coming up onto that surface, but it's kind of cool. It looks like wet dirt if I kind of bring this up like this. And let's add a little bit of, a little bit of white to. Where's my, where's my dirt colors? I need some red and yellow. Red yellow and then red I'm just trying to make a more gradual transition into that light dirt color that's all I'm doing right now just remixing that that light dirt color this reflection it's reflecting down onto this wet dirt, but it's getting more dry, less reflective as it comes this way. So I just want to make somewhat of a gradual change there. My brush is just dirty with these colors. Red and yellow and white. You know, the nice thing about this water-based paint is, is uh, it, it doesn't mix when it's, it doesn't even mix when it's wet as much as oil does. I mean, oil, you just, you know, once you have a color on there, you, you can't change the color by just painting over it. It bleeds into everything. But, you know, you can, you can pile paints on with water-based and, and adjust your colors more easily. There, there's my shoreline. And this is where it's just getting a little darker and grayer as it's just slightly wet enough to reflect that rock. All right. We'll save the rest for next week. Spray paint art by Seth Johnson says, yes, part three is here. All right, I like that enthusiasm, thanks. Adrian uh, Acevedo says, could you please paint a mountain scene where you make the mountains more detailed, maybe with snow and some rocks? That's a good idea, maybe we can do it in this picture. Peter Simon Zhang says, this one is actually pretty good. <laughs> Thanks. Celtic Saint says, do you have any experience in painting highly reflective objects? I would love to see a demo if you do. Well, like I talked about earlier with the water, highly reflective means that, that you have more distinct lines of separation between objects and the reflection. The more you, the more you blur the lines between your reflected colors, the more it looks like it, it starts to dull the, the, the glossy effect of that object. So clean, sharp lines looks highly reflective. 
and then truer colors. The, the truer you make the reflection colors to the, the source that they're reflecting, the more metallic it's going to look. So chrome uh, is, is, is gray and colorless, so it's like a mirror. You know, you see very much the true colors of what it's reflecting, plus a little bit of gray. If you were painting gold, you would have a lot of colors represented, but all of them with the gold color mixed in, but still with a lot of difference between the colors. Versus if you just had like a goldish colored plastic, then all of those colors in the reflection would be a lot closer to the gold color of that plastic. So metallic equals truer colors, more contrast, more like the source, but still with the, the gold color mixed into them. I'm gonna have to do a demo on that someday. Jane Stowe says, watching you paint water helps me a lot. Water intimidates me. It is intimidating, definitely. I, I hope this has been some encouragement watching me wrestle with this thing that it, it doesn't just automatically happen for me. I don't have a magical talent that makes water look like water. Uh, sometimes I wrestle with it for hours and hours uh, because I know what the final look needs to be. Not because I have an awesome technique that automatically achieves that look, but just because I know what it needs to be and I'll wrestle with it until it gets there. Sima Menon Thacker Recently, I've learned to use black, as I've seen you do, and realized it's a good way to get darker value as well as saturate, desaturate the existing color. Definitely true. Use of black just clicked into place. Thank you from India. Thank you so much for, for that uh, success report. That's very encouraging for me to hear that, and I think you're, you're right on. Joshua Balansky says, when are we going to see some nebula? I'm banging my head against the wall trying to make vibrant colors and everything around it's black. Vibrant colors, the most vibrant colors you can make are, are by first applying a white base. So if you really want bright color and you're struggling maybe with the black showing through, uh, maybe that's not what you're talking about. But uh, nevertheless, the brightest colors you can make are by layering color over the top of white. So a trick with things you want to look like bright colored light is to first paint it in white, something that I do when I paint flames, and then layer the color over the top of it. Something you might consider. Robert James, Whole Art. My favorite channel on YouTube, so I thank you. He says he works with watercolor and that is very different. So he says, I yearn for an equivalent channel for watercolor. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that would be awesome. Hey, maybe you can be that channel. I'm just saying, you know, this, uh, the stuff that, that I have researched and tried to show in videos is not restricted to people who have special abilities with their hands, you know, and so if you have talent to paint and you want that kind of channel, maybe you can make it. Making a YouTube channel is definitely not for everybody. M. Amir says, I just have one wish after seeing you painting, to paint like you, especially the 3D effect. Loads of love from Dubai. So thank you for the shout out from Dubai. I always love greetings from, from far away places. That's exciting to me to think of people watching in other places. The 3D effect, you know, I demonstrated some of it here with these colors. I hope that I can relay a lot more of this information. There's like five or six things that I've identified that very specifically make things 3D, but a couple are demonstrated here. Perspective that is, that is very strictly followed can make things look very 3D, 3D. And then uh, using these edges, all the edges of objects. Now there's other things too that are, that are really important that aren't demonstrated in this picture uh, right now, but, but I definitely wanna get to a video that's all about getting a 3D effect. Gregor Johnson, ahoy. Really enjoy your videos. Been an enlightening experience watching. I say you're quite the source of painting philosophy. And for this, I have to say thanks. It would be fun if you someday would honor us with something abstract and really vibrant. That's perhaps more the things I like to do. Anyway, keep up the good work and may the luck of the Irish shine upon you. Thank you very much, Gregor. I think that's a great idea. I think that the last comment talking about what makes things look 3D could be very well demonstrated with maybe some more abstract content. So, so I'm gonna put some thought into a future project 
that maybe does both of these things. Gets away from the realism, but still uses natural rules of, of light and shape and color to create something interesting and three-dimensional, but that's not so defined so that it has more of an abstract feel. I, I think that could be a cool project. I'm gonna keep that in mind. That's all I have time for uh, this week, so thank you very much for watching. It's always a pleasure for me to share, and I look forward to seeing you next week.